Hi and welcome back. My name is Mrs. Brown and we are getting close to the end of our two-week journey on Celilo Falls and the reading and writing activities that we've been doing. So here we go. Today is Wednesday, April 1st. There is no April Fools in this lesson today, so don't be looking for that. But we are going to finish our story today reading I Wish I Had Seen the Falls. Now last time we heard all about what happened at Celilo Falls, how the salmon would uh, would swim upstream and how, this, how the, the fishers would only take what they needed so that they would make sure that there were enough food for future generations, really taking care of those future generations. And, um, and we also heard about how the salmon were prepared. We, uh, we, we learned a lot about lamprey eels, and, uh, and now we are going to finish our journey. Our narrator, Chucky, is still talking with his grandma, talking with his grandma about Celilo Falls, and now he's going to ask some uh, pretty hard questions. So, let's continue. We are going to finish the story and then again you're going to be uh, answering some prompts afterward either in your head or discussing discussing with family members or or adults that you have at home with you um, or or just writing on their on your own so that we can make sure and uh, and think about the details that you want to put in your story okay all right so let's go ahead and get started again here are our photos of Celilo Falls, Grandma's photos, and now we start with Chucky's question. Where are the falls now, Grandma? I asked. Oh, long time ago, the government wanted to build dams and told us we would have to move because the new dam would flood over Celilo Falls and the village. We didn't have a choice and we had to move. I asked Grandma when that happened, and she told me it was a long time ago in March of 1957. Well, where were you, Grandma? I was with my two sisters, my brother, mother, father, grandmother, and grandfather, standing on the hillside when it happened. Once that dam was built, they closed the huge concrete gates, which stopped the flow of the river, and the water began rising. We stood in our buckskin dresses and regalia to honor and mourn the loss, Grandma said. It took almost eight hours before Celilo Falls was completely covered over. Some of the people in the village were so hurt that day that they left because they didn't want to see the falls disappear. People that stayed at the village had their drums and they were pounding them and they were crying and they were praying and there was so much sadness with the loss of Celilo Falls. Grandma's hand held many of the pictures of the falls as she looked outside the window. I looked up at her and she has tears in her eyes as she stared at the river. I grabbed her hand and said, come on, Grandma, let's pray to the Creator to forgive what happened here. She looked down at me and said, you are right, my grandson. We have to go on, but we don't ever want to forget this place because it is a part of us. It is who we are. I know that every time I walk with my grandma, I will learn something new. As I stood there and stood there with her that day, I thought to myself, I wish I could have seen Celilo fall so that I could run and play and feel the mist on my face and hear the roar of the water as it rushed over the rocks. Now I understand how important the falls were to my family and their family before that. The end. So, did this story end like you thought it would? What did you think Chucky would have done? What do you think would have, ha would have changed if the falls hadn't been what is called inundated, what is called flooded over? And it's hard, it's hard to think about that. 
the writing prompts that I want you to think about are here, describing what you read today, but also maybe describing what you felt. It happened so quickly, just eight hours, eight hours and this place, this sacred place that had been there for millennia, for thousands and thousands and thousands of years was suddenly gone, gone forever. No more trading, no more dancing. I want you to think about a conclusion. I've asked you to infer and I've asked you to predict and I've asked you to envision. And now think about a conclusion. What do you think the importance is today of saliva bowl? I also want you to think about the end of your story as well. What would you write? It can be fiction. It can be, it can be anything you want it to be. Is there going to be a twist like we see of Saliva Falls, something so important and something so horrible and final happens? So I think about <clears throat> my story. I told you that I would start thinking about my story and my illustrations. And so I have here my first draft where I took my, my drawing of Cemetery Road and right here, I start talking about the tar road. And so I have the road right here. And then on the other side, I start continuing. I start, I start talking about the cemetery and I have my picture of the cemetery here as well. So you could do something like this um, as you continue to draw. We'll do some more. We'll do some more um, revising and we'll do some more envisioning. And we will take a look at all of grandma's photos. We'll take a look at Celilo Falls before March of 1957 and after March of 1957 and how the place changed. Because places do change and I want you to think about the future of your story. How might your place change? How might it look 50 years from now? Maybe think about that as you as you spend some time writing right now. It's a short lesson today, writing right now about your place and what that might feel like. Again, use your sensory imagery. What might it sound and feel and taste and look like and sound like? So thank you so much for listening. And uh, it was an abrupt ending to I Wish I Had Seen the Falls. And so we'll do some more processing and some more visualizing about it next time. I hope you join me. Until then, write, enjoy the day, go out and play, and think about your place.